Hey there everyone, Spazzy Dragon here, aka Syndromes from Discovery Freelancer, and welcome to my questions and answers video. As you might have expected, a lot of these videos that I post both on YouTube and then link to the forums get a lot of questions, especially from new players, because, let's face it, this is why I make these videos for new players, right? And a lot of these videos get uh, comments, I get a lot of PMs in my inbox, which by the way, YouTube, please fix, because I don't get any notification that I get these uh, things. There's no inbox button nowhere on the screen when I just log in. And, well, a lot of these questions are pretty simple, and a lot of these questions need to be answered a bit more in detail, but at the same time, they're not big enough to actually make a tutorial video on. So... That is exactly what I'm going to do now. Uh, this is a start of a mini-series called the Questions and Answers, as you might have guessed from the title. And here I'm going to answer all the little questions you might want to give me, the ones I have already answered, because hey, if someone asked it once, probably someone else will ask it again. So, well, let's just start. So the first one, sent to me in early February actually, comes from Samuel Henson, who asks, To Syndromes, do you have to be a part of the Liberty Navy player faction to get a capital ship? I have a Liberty Navy ID, and I don't know if I have to be a part of the Liberty Navy. It would be a big help if you could tell me this. I know that my ID lets, my, lets me use capital ships, but I want to stay on good terms with the player faction. Yeah, this is actually a very good question, but not why would you think it is. If that makes any sense, because quite frankly, it didn't make sense to me what I just said. Sorry, I'm sort of sitting here a little bit tipsy, but please bear with me. Okay, so the question itself is, as I said already, pretty simple. Can I use a capital ship if I'm not in the player faction, the official one? The short answer is yes, yes you can, obviously. As long as your ID permits it, you can fly any ship's class specified on that ID, regardless of if you are an independent pilot or are you a, fa a uh, are a part for a part of a official faction or a player group or whatever. The problem here is that um, the problem here concerns the capital ships as a class itself. And uh, let me try and tell you that. Anyway, this is my little civilian shuttle, as you might it's, might see. It's the first thing you will ever fly. And this is a battleship. This is actually a fictional character I just made on my server called the LNS Santa Clara. It is a Liberty Dreadnought. And uh, this is probably one of the most expensive ships you will ever get to get in the game. And obviously you might think that a uh, ship like this is probably going to be your so-called endgame um, sort of ship, right? Wrong. That is uh, one of the problems we have right now, is that if we are going to te test that real quick... Um, let's just beam us back to Eri, and here's the problem. We set a completely bad train of thought for new players. The first thing you do when you undock from Planet Erie, which you start off, in your dinky little ship, the first thing you see is a battleship Gettysburg. It's almost as if Discovery's telling you, hey, look at that scrap file you're currently flying. Hey, that a shitty little ship. But look at that! Look at that battleship over there! That's, that's the ship you are going to fly in a few months. Or a few weeks. Depending on <laughs> how much you can trade. That is a very bad train of thought you can uh, you can follow, and between you and me, um, obviously I need to remind you that all these videos are done by one person, and, you know, bias. A lot of my own train of thought is uh, put into these videos, so, you know, take this as an advice, not an actual guide. Between you and me, uh, capital ships, battleships especially, are one of the biggest um, newbie traps there is in Discovery right now. And the reason is actually pretty simple. Let's just move back to Santa Clara for a moment. And the reason is pretty simple. 
Now, you might think that this is a terrific ship, and, well, don't get me wrong, it is, otherwise people wouldn't fly it, right? Now, the thing is, this is one of the most expensive ship classes in the game. It has the most armor, it has the most powerful weapons, and you can add all sorts of nifty little things on it, like cloaks, jump drives, uh, docking modules, um, so on and so on. But see, the problem is very simple. These ships are not the strongest ships in the game, and that is something new players have a very big um, problem grasping with. Like, how can something that costs so much not be a good ship? Sorry about that. The answer is, it's not. It's, it's not a bad ship, but it's highly, highly, highly specialized. And that's just something that new players can't grasp that easily. The reason why, well, from a balance perspective, the reason why it actually costs so much is just to somehow prevent from anyone grabbing one of these. And, well, obviously, most do, but that's not the reason, right? That's not the main reason. The main reason is that these ships are in fact powerful, and you need multiple ships to take it down. Now, imagine if you are a already a veteran player, and you come across a completely new player who somehow acquired one of these things, who has no concept of what is roleplay, they hardly know the server rules, and you meet them in a ship like this. There's nothing you can do about it. You actually have to wait for an admin to do something, or gather up a group of players and just try to restrain the guy. Just imagine this thing going around and shooting new players. That's a horrible thing. And that is the reason why capital ships have become... have been... Uh, well, haven't become... Uh, I would say they have been... Uh, over the years they have been laced with a horrible stigma that anyone pl piloting a capital ship without a very good reason, as if there is not a... if it's not a raid or something, or something very specific, is simply a player who thinks that it's the best ship in game, and now that he has it, he is the king of everything and shouldn't follow any rules. And uh, to be quite frank, if you're flying one of these, it's very hard not to think like that. I can guarantee you, the moment you will start flying into a capital ship, you will feel a lot more powerful. And don't get me wrong, if you fly correctly, you will be more powerful, right? But here's the fact. New players should not go for capital ships. They can fly them, obviously. There's no restrictions right now that you have to be a part of some sort of faction to fly these things. Unless, of course, um, some very specific uh, examples. For example, the Kahara ID and the Nomad ID. Both are completely the same. They're, they are Nomad IDs. One is the public Nomad ID, the Nomad ID. And the other one is the player faction ID, the Kahara ID. Both of them are pretty much the same in terms of engagement, that they can attack any ship regardless of affiliation, but the public one allows only up to a gunboat, I think? It, I think it was the gunboat? And uh, the player faction allows battleships and cruisers. Okay, off topic. Anyway, that is the big deal. Uh, if you're going to get a capital ship, don't be surprised that a lot of the, quote, more veteran players or even, you know, official players might look at you a bit more differently. If you don't know how to properly use this thing, you are going to become very unpopular. It's actually pretty sad. The same people you would normally fly around on your very heavy fighter on every day and just chill together. If many players just have seen so many bad people in these things, then the general assumption in Discovery right now is the guy is a complete moron until proven otherwise. And that is just something you wouldn't really want to experience as a new player. Uh, what I would suggest is fly around a little bit, get get to know people a little bit, learn from the mistakes of other people. Because if you're flying around in a um, snub and you will every, every once in a while you will see a 
a very bad player piloting one of these, just watch what they're doing wrong and watch how people react around them. It's very simple to see and uh, very simple to, in theory, I, I don't know, I, I haven't been a new player for a few years, but in my opinion, it is in fact the simplest way to learn from it. So, long story short, can you fly a Liberty Navy, any, any capital ship, without having to join a player faction? Yes. Should you do that as a new player? Highly depends. It really highly depends. Uh, actually, capital ships as a as a ship class itself is pretty fun to role play on, but they have a lot of unwritten rules. Sadly, so many, in fact, that I'm going to make a video soon, and um, it's pretty much going to be how to role play in a capital ship. There is also a neat little thread on the forums, it's called So, you want to fly a capital ship? Which I'm, by the way, going to link to the video description so you can go there and check it out yourself. And they explain pretty much in the best way possible of all the uh, cons and pros of flying a capital ship. I hope, hope that this is going to answer your question, and obviously if someone else has other questions regarding capital ships, please post away in the comment section or on my inbox, and I will hopefully make a video about it. This was the first episode, and um, the next one is going to address the second question.